Hey Oddings, it's your Ate Sapphire. I know you want to get into today's episode, but before we do, I wanted to quickly tell you about one of our amazing sponsors who, without them, the show would not be possible. If you're looking for a better night's sleep, I recommend that you try a purple mattress. They're firm and soft at the same time. It's a brand new material developed by an actual rocket scientist. These mattresses will keep you supported and yet still very comfortable at the same time. And they're breathable, so you stay cool. So if you want to get a better night's sleep, try purple for a 100 night risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your mattress for a full refund. Every mattress comes backed by a 10 year warranty and is shipped to your home for free. And and while they're at it, Purple will set up and remove your old mattress for you as well. You're going to love Purple. And right now, our listeners will get a free Purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to the great free gifts they're offering site-wide. Just text SS to 84888. Message and data rates may apply. And now, back to the show. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? The Kelpie. The following story is based on a submission from V in Scotland. Until I was 13 years old, I lived in a small village in Scotland. It was a very peaceful and serene area with a gentle river not too far away. I lived in a house with my mother and grandmother. I would never met my father. I figured he left the family before I was born. Neither my mother nor grandmother ever talked about him, so I never really asked about him. It was the morning before my 13th birthday. My mom came into my room and sat on my bed. She jokingly asked if I wanted a unicorn for my birthday. Like most little girls, I had a horse phase, but I was slowly growing out of it. So I just told her that I'd love some more books. There actually was something that I wanted for my birthday, but I didn't think my mom would be happy about it. I'd be fine with just the books. I loved to read after all. One of my favorite things to do was go out into the nearby forest, lean against my favorite tree and read a book. And that's what I did later that day. I tucked my copy of Where the Red Fern Grows under my arm and walked to my spot. I was lost in my book for maybe 15 minutes when I was interrupted by a sound. It sounded like the neigh of a horse. I thought it was really odd, so I decided to see where it was coming from. It led me to the river. Standing by the water was the most beautiful and majestic white horse I'd ever seen. Its coat was smooth and shiny. Its mane was long and luxurious. It turned its sparkling black eyes toward me, and I felt compelled to go closer. I know it sounds strange, but 12-year-old me felt as if the horse was asking me to ride it. I didn't hear the words, but I felt it inside me. It was so weird. I continued to approach the magnificent beast when I heard my mother's voice, not in my head, but echoing among the trees. I snapped out of my trance and began to walk back home, bidding the mysterious horse goodbye. At the dinner table, I told my family about the horse that I saw. They both stopped and looked at me. Are you sure it was a horse that you saw? My mother asked. The forest can play tricks on your eyes. I'm positive it was a horse, I replied. It was so beautiful. What do you think it was doing out there? I don't know what it was you saw, but you should probably stay away from the river. It's not safe. I remember feeling really confused and frustrated by their response to my experience. Why didn't they just believe me? The next morning, I woke up to my mom singing happy birthday to me in my room. She said my grandma had gone into town for a special birthday surprise so we would celebrate when she got back. My mom asked me what I wanted to do while we waited and I told her that I was really close to finishing my book and just wanted to do that. So I went back to my favorite spot and began to read. Moments later, I heard someone calling my name. V. Hey, V. I looked up, and there was a kind-looking woman, possibly in her 20s, peering from around a tree. You're Douglas's daughter, no? I cocked my head at her in disbelief and replied, How did you know? She smiled warmly and gestured for me to follow her. He wanted you to have this for your 13th birthday. Come, now. 
I knew I wasn't supposed to follow strangers deeper into the forest. I knew that. But she knew who I was, so maybe she wasn't a complete stranger. I closed my book and followed her. She led me to the same clearing by the river I was at yesterday. And there it was, the same white horse. It's all yours, dear. Happy birthday. The horse seemed to nod its head at me, almost as if reassuring me that, yes, all of this was true. My father was out there somewhere and sent this horse as my birthday gift. I had so many unanswered questions, but in that moment, all of my concerns sort of drifted away. The only thought on my mind was that I needed to ride that horse. It was even more gorgeous up close. As if under a spell, my hand reached out to stroke its mane. But after one stroke, I realized something was very wrong. My hand was stuck. It wouldn't come off. While I frantically tried to pry it off, I heard the woman laughing maniacally behind me. Then suddenly, a gunshot. I turned around to see the woman's body on the ground morph into the body of a dead black horse. And a few feet away was my grandmother, aiming a gun right at me with a cake box at her feet. Please forgive me, V. Now hold still. I ducked my head and felt liquid fire tear through my fingers. She had shot my hand. I grabbed my bleeding digits with my other hand and screamed wildly. But, but I was free. I ran toward my grandmother while the horse's body began to shrivel and fall into the river. After my grandmother had bandaged my hand and I had calmed down, I asked her what the hell happened back there. I am so sorry, V, she said, but I had no choice. That Kelpie was going to drag you into the river and drown you. Kelpie? What's a Kelpie? They're malicious horses that live near the water. They can shape shift into human beings to try and trick you into riding their sticky bodies. That's actually how your father died. I took a moment to let that new information sink in. But why didn't we move? Why didn't we leave this area? Because we didn't want to believe that's what happened, V, my mother cried. We moved to the city shortly after, far away from any large body of water. I may have lost a piece of me that day, but I also got my birthday wish. I finally learned the truth. Thank you to all of our patrons. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com slash snarled. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary at snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, sweet dreams.